Fantastic. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I, I love um, that we got to chat the other day and get to say hello. And now we get to do our conversation. So thank you so much for making the time. Um, so can you uh, maybe just, uh, you know, I read a little bit of your bio there, but if you could, you know, maybe t share a little bit about for our listeners here of about your career journey and how you ended up at Freddie Mac and maybe where what what brought you to that that choice of being like, oh, I want to stay here. And we'll talk more about why you want to stay there later. But maybe just like, what were some of those those steps to get you to where you are now? Absolutely. So I'm originally from Panama. I come from a very traditional, you know, family, mom, dad, my, my siblings growing up uh, in Panama. And I always knew I wanted to be an engineer. Mm. I was one of those girls always playing with Lego, um, my parents weren't too happy with me because I was putting things together and then <laughs> breaking them down and trying to put them back together, not always successfully. Yeah. So, but, but that it started early on and then it continued. So I, I wanted to work for the Panama Canal and I wanted to be a naval engineer, but because I was a woman, only men could actually study to become uh, naval engineers. So I started, uh, my career as a mechanical engineer. I ended up doing a minor in naval engineering, but I was not able to become the naval engineer that I wanted to be, mm -hmm. but I was able to work at the Panama Canal. There I was working at a power plant. I was doing maintenance for an 18 megawatt diesel engine. But for me as a woman in engineering, uh, it, it was challenging. I always get to hear like, you know, that I, I wasn't knowledgeable enough or I didn't have enough experience and I realized I was never going to be able to be in, in the management side because they said, oh, no, you're a pure engineer. You don't understand the business. So I made a decision. You know what? I'm going to get an MBA. And that way I'm going to be able to translate, you know, technical to, to business and back and forth. And I ended up um, pursuing an MBA. So after I did my master's, that opened up a whole bunch of opportunities to to go to other countries, to go and work at, at different companies. I was able to work for Yahoo, uh, Microsoft. I've been uh, all over the world. Literally, I was in the Middle East. I was in Europe. I work in New Zealand, which was one of the best experiences that I have uh, at a software company there. But then when it became time to um, start my family, I came back to the United States. And I, I had to take some, some time off or I decided to take some time off to raise my kids. And that was a bit of a challenge going back you know, to, to the workforce because I had some gaps in my resume. Mm. And I ended up working at Freddie Mac. So they were very flexible in, in, in the sense that you know, I was able to walk them through the reasons for the gaps. And I really liked the, the the mission of the company. So at Freddie Mac, we are, we're making home possible. And for me, because um, I'm an immigrant, then I felt that having a home is, is so important to make people feel grounded. I belong. This is my home. So I, I immediately uh, loved the mission and, and started working at Freddie Mac. And here I am, you know, after seven years later. Seven years. Here we are. It's amazing. Wow. What? Thank you so much for taking us through that journey of through getting your MBA and working in the Panama, Panama Canal and Yahoo and Microsoft and New Zealand. I would love to hear why that was one of your best experiences. And just like, oh my gosh, I was just like, all these colors were flying through my hair as you were describing your story. It's so incredible. <laughs> so you. I love to, you know, you talked about like how it started early, you know, with the, the Legos as a kid is really beautiful, you know, just like it was, it's something very early on that you had this, um, this impulse to do. And um, so then as you grew old, uh, as you, you know, grew up a bit and, you know, you started to gather more knowledge, you had some experiences that were challenging. You described, you know, you said how folks were saying, oh, because you're a woman, you don't have the knowledge, which is just bonkers. And, you know, and, and then you, seeked out more knowledge, but you already were capable probably of quite a bit, but you needed to, you know, do these things in order to like check these boxes, right? So can you talk about, uh, I would love to hear about, you know, 
you've talked about being an immigrant as well and this intersectionality and like how, so you've done these different things, you have these experiences, but also how does your different, like your cultures that you've experienced help you and that you are a part of like help you at work now? Like you have all of these well of experience now. Sure. I, since I've had the opportunity to, to work in many different countries and, and, and learning many different uh, experiences from them, it definitely made me more sensitive. Mm -hmm. I'm much more um, open. I'm much more in tune with uh, other cultures. And, and I always try to, to bring that in and, you know, always respecting, always willing to learn, always happy to share also my own culture. And, and that's definitely uh, been helpful even at the workforce or actually, mm -hmm. especially at the workforce. So Freddie Mac, we are a minority, majority minority company. So uh, we're very diverse. So it's, it's very helpful to, to have that understanding of the cultures and being uh, embracing other cultures as well. Mm. I love that. So what are some of the, can you describe like what your, what your role at Freddie Mac is and um, how your leadership skills show up and, and what are maybe some of the role models you have as a leader that you're like, oh, that, whether within Freddie Mac or outside of Freddie Mac that have inspired you to help guide you and your leadership skills? Absolutely. So at Freddie Mac, what I do, um, I'm the director for program management. I manage a portfolio of different projects, programs, and, and issue resolution and, and issue management. It, it has a little bit of end user services, a little bit of infosec, and a little bit of governance. So it's a portfolio with several different projects. And we look at everything from beginning to end, the creation, making sure that um, we are managing risks, we're managing issues, that we are reporting up, and that we're finishing things on time, on budget, on schedule. So that's that's the aim of the, the work that we're doing. A, in the enterprise and operation side of the house, which for Freddie Mac is what other companies will, will think of as IT. Mm. So that's what I do. Uh, in terms of my leadership style, it's, it's interesting because most of the time I don't see myself as a leader. Mm. But the, the, the things that I like to do is I, I like to raise my hand, I like to take on challenges, and I like to bring you know, my team and the people around me along with me and make sure that we're all delivering together. And you can consider that, you know, part of leadership mm -hmm. and, and trying to make sure that uh, we're, we're all uh, driving towards uh, the goals that we have in, in our group or, or uh, as a company. And in terms of like people that I look up to, I, there, there's so many different examples, but for, for this one, I'm actually gonna go for, with my grandmother. She, um, she was an early widow. She had eight kids. So she, as a single mother, had to raise them all. And she, mm -hmm. she was very adamant that they, that they should never stop dreaming, that they could do anything and everything they wanted to do. And my mom passed that along to me as well. And I grew up thinking, believing, knowing that I could do anything that I wanted to do. And I still believe that. Well, that's so beautiful and wonderful to have such a supportive mother. Absolutely. Oh, I love that. Um, can you, uh, you know, I want to turn back the clock a little bit here. You said you've been at Freddie Mac for about seven years and you described it as uh, being a minority majority company. Did you know that when you were applying for the job? How was that onboarding process for you? What was that learning curve? Were you attracted to it because of that? Or did that happen to be like a happy coincidence? Like, talk to me about that journey. So I, I knew that ahead of time. I yeah. did my homework before um, applying to, to, different, to different companies. I started as a consultant. So when I became a full-time employee, I already knew the environment. I already knew the mission. I knew the work. And most importantly, I knew the people. And the people is, is one of the main uh, assets, or is the main asset that we have uh, as a company. Mm -hmm. And definitely, I, I love the environment. I love the, the uh, teamwork. And so, so that's how I ended up. That's how I ended up staying. So I was a CW first and then a, an FTE. And I knew what Freddie stands for. I 
I, I'm pretty sure that most people know about Freddie Mac one way or another. So it, it was definitely a, a good company to have in my resume. So um, I'm so happy to be here. Mm. And what keeps you there? So you, you knew about, uh, you know, you said you, you, you mentioned too about like, it's really a people business, right? And it's the team. So like what, uh, and I'm curious, like, do you work remotely or you, uh, do you go in and what's that like? And like, what, what, like, you're like, oh, I am looking forward to my day because blank at Freddie Mac today. Do you have those feelings? Absolutely. So you had several questions in there. So the, yes, the that's first usually one, how I roll. Sorry. <laughs> so, so the first one um, about a, if I'm remote, I am a hundred percent remote. So oh, wow. Freddie Mac has offices in, in many different areas in the country. Our headquarters is in McLean, Virginia. I was driving, I, I was waking up 4.30 in the morning, driving to Virginia uh, three days out of the week. So I would go there, spend some time, come back. And I was remote two days. And then uh, during the pandemic, when everybody was remote, I, I actually applied to be a, a full-time remote employee and it, it was approved. So I am a working full-time remote from Philadelphia. I do, however, go to the office as needed there. Definitely, uh, if you have a planning session, if you want to do a whiteboarding, it, it gets not impossible, but it's challenging a uh, remote. So if we have a team events, uh, if, even if we just have like a happy hour, some social gathering that one attend, I still go to the office because I recognize the, the importance of having that face-to-face -face, um, opportunity. But at the same time, by Freddie providing the flexibility of, of em some employees being remote, it has opened up the opportunity to, to find talent all across the country. And, and to me, that's super valuable. Mm. And uh, what, what, what keeps me at Freddie Mac? So yeah. we have excellent benefits. I, I am not gonna, I'm not gonna lie. We have a, a lot of support for people that wanna grow. I've been through several conferences. Um, I'm getting some, some uh, classes. I'm getting a, some of my, some of my uh, team members are able to, to take uh, credits from, from different universities. All that's sponsored by Freddie Mac. Um, if you're a first time home buyer, Freddie Mac gives you a lot of support to make that happen. Freddie was helping me pay my student loans. Um, fortunately, I don't have <laughs> a student loans anymore. But Congratulations. Um, again, many, <laughs> yes, thank you. It's part, it's part of many, many of the, of the benefits that Freddie has. Oh, and and nice. what what when I wake up and I say, oh, I want to work because of, okay, so some of those blanks, the flexibility, the opportunity to to see the work that I'm doing actually being used I, in, in the past and, and especially as a consultant, I, I will put together, you know, material information that was shelved somewhere and it was not really used. Here, you have an idea, you have all the support to see it through from beginning to end. And, and, and to me, that's very valuable to see that you're, you're an active contributor, uh, to see that uh, you can come up with good ideas and people are gonna listen to you. And if you get enough people behind you, then you can turn that idea into a project and, and see it through. So that's, that's something that I haven't experienced in, in many other places. So for sure, you have that, that opportunity, at least in, in that's my, that's been my experience so far. Oh, that's awesome! Yeah, that's it's it's a huge gift, right? It's it's a huge benefit as you're talking about some of this, you know, very practical benefits. But that's also just being able to have your voice heard and be able to take on leadership roles. That is a huge benefit, and not always the case at every company. That's true. Yeah. So I'd love to hear about too. You know, I love hearing all about the ins and outs there of some of the things you enjoy at Freddie Mac. Are there also because you're now you're saying you're 100% remote? Is there ways that you get to stay connected with other people on your team? And is there ways that you do that that celebrate your intersectionality? Do you have you know there's ERGs and affinity groups and sometimes you know here at Power to Fly we have Slack channels and you know, every company does their own thing. What are some of the ways that you stay connected with some of the folks of uh, you know all the different colors of the rainbow over at Freddie Mac? 
So the BRGs at Freddie Mac are very active. So we have several different BRGs. I myself belong to, to at least three or four of them. And there are always activities and we can have hybrid get togethers or we can have in-person or, or fully uh, virtual events. But we have a lot of um, uh, activities, a lot of events. Um, we also, uh, how to stay connected with the team, we have daily stand-ups. So not a day goes by that I don't hear from my team. Uh, we have our channels. We are constantly connecting back and forth uh, what's happening. We have the more formal channels where we are talking about uh, projects, but then we have our team channels where we're talking about uh, how's the weather in there, that somebody is having a birthday and, and that kind of situation. So the fact that we are hybrid, um, it, it, it hasn't it hasn't limited the the interaction it hasn't uh, really stopped us from from being connected and knowing uh, what's going on with with everybody so that hasn't been a problem but but yeah so in, in terms of uh, intersectionality we have women in technology so check then we also have ola which is our, our hispanic leadership association so check uh, we also have like a if, if you if your thing is the environment, we have that. Then we also have activities that are not necessarily driven by BRGs, but if we want to uh, go help build furniture for uh, for a house or actually go help build a house, like we, we're part of, um, we have all those opportunities and then it's um, a volunteer based. So you can participate as little or as much as you want to in, in some of the activities that, that we have going on around work. Oh, that's fantastic. I love that there's there's activities that are recreational. It sounds like there's support, there's there's community service, there's different groups that you can connect with. And I love hearing how it's it's always refreshing to hear how um, the technology is actually helping bring people together and not, you know, it's easy for us to separate. But if the resources are there, we're actually able to come closer together, which is always encouraging. Um, so, you know, with, with the tech, you know, constantly, like all of these different resources that we're talking about, they're all changing rapidly. There's a new app, you know, probably thousands of new apps released on the app store every day and technology is constantly evolving in our lives. Um, can you share how you keep current and, you know, you mentioned Freddie Mac has resources if you want to grow, um, and, and evolve, can you speak more to potentially, uh, how that has helped you and how you today still evolve and keep current and learn new things um, as everything keeps changing? So you're, you're absolutely right. Uh, with technology changing so rapidly, uh, sometimes it's hard to keep up. So I like to, to do a lot of reading. I, I, I like to see what's going on. I get dedicated magazines that will mm. You know, talk about what's what's um, happening in the world of technology. I also participate in conferences. Um, at, at least, you know, uh, twice a year, I'll be in a conference learning what's happening, what's what's new, what's different, what can we implement, what can we, you know, pick up and, and and start using. And I'm not so quick to jump into the the, the new technology right away. But at the same time, once we make a decision, this is the way that we're doing. I don't shy away from, you know, getting my hands dirty and, and try to get um, working right away. How 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 things uh, how the new gadget works and how can I apply it into into the work that, that we're doing? I love that. Yeah, I'm I'm such a little. It's funny. I have such a relationship to tech where I'm constantly fascinated by it and I'm always reading about it, and yet then I have to dedicate parts of my day that have nothing to do with screens, nothing to do with tech and you know, go walk my dog and just like unplug. Are there things for you that um, help keep you balanced between that work-life balance and that like recharge you so that you're not always just like stuck in the work loop? I, I like doing all kinds of activities. I have two kids, nine and 12 and-, and That'll they keep like you busy. <laughs> that, that definitely keeps me busy. Uh, we made the, I, I don't, I, we made the decision of purchase a historic home. It's mm. 125 years old and wow. we're doing that, that renovation. Most of the renovation is being done by ourselves. 
Oh, so cool. I'm, I'm spending a lot of time and not so far away from technology, let me tell you, because we rely a lot in, in you know, the internet to figure out like how, how do you apply polyurethane on the floor? Oh, okay, that's what we do. And then we go and try it out. Uh, okay, how, how can you remove 75 year old wallpaper? Oh, okay, this is the way to do it. And so my work-life balance, uh, it's spending family time and, and doing things that are um, not work related, but at the end of the day, you know, it's, it's home related. So I feel still connected to Freddie somehow. Absolutely. Oh, you need to get a camera crew in there. You could have your own reality show. <laughs> there's this great, I, I personally, I want to see it because there's this great show that I love called Escape to the Chateau. I don't know if you're familiar with it, but you're living it right now. <laughs> so if I, if I had a, if I had a TV show, it would be called something like what not to do. <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 these are these are the things to avoid here. <laughs> yeah, you know those. That that's very useful information. <laughs> there you go. Well, some people need to learn that way. You know, there's like some some people take advice. Some others, you know, like to learn the the hard way. But yeah, for yeah. those that want to learn what not to do, talk to me. House renovation. <laughs> innovation. <laughs> I mean, we learn by with trial by fire, trial by error. You know, um, it makes me think of one time. I live in New York City. I think I shared that with you last time, and. I was walking down the street and, uh, you know, you get these little moments when you live in a city and you get to like eavesdrop on other people's conversations. And there was this um, uh, parent walking their child, you know, down the street and the kids just kind of yapping away. And, and, the, and the, I didn't hear what the kid said, but I heard the, the parent's response and the parent said, oh, honey, you don't, you don't have to apologize for for asking, uh, there's no dumb questions. You know, you don't have to ask a question, uh, apologize for asking that question because every great discovery started with a question, you know? And I just love that because it's like, stay curious, make mistakes. And, you know, does, when you make, you know, we were talking about your home renovation, but I've made mistakes in the workplace. You know, Power to Fly has been very supportive here. I've had it other jobs as well. Um, did, when, have you encountered mistakes and um, do you feel comfortable to ask questions at Freddie Mac? And do you feel like you can help others when you witness them make a mistake or maybe for yourself if something comes up? So I definitely make tons and tons of mistakes. Um, at work, we say, you know, if you're gonna fail, fail fast. So make sure that, that uh, you, you figure out if this is not the right way to go, then switch direction, try to mm. do it faster. But we are, are trying to change the culture uh, towards being more open to making mistakes. Mm. And, and sometimes in our personal lives, we do that, but at work, it's, it's, still, it's still a little bit hard. Like it, I'm gonna give an example for us managing projects. We report the status of a project you know, very, uh, in, in a very easy way, the green, yellow, red. And, mm. and, and people, tend to avoid the yellow and the red because then that brings a lot more questions, a lot more scrutiny conversations. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to change that culture to say, hey, not because your project is yellow or your project is red, like you're in trouble. Like don't, don't try to, to hide or, 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 or change your, your status because it's important to know that there is something that we need to pay attention to. And by bringing up that, that I don't want to call it a mistake, but since we're talking about making mistakes, uh, those issues. So then we can have the conversation, we can try to resolve it. Somebody else might have a great idea how to solve it or just to bring the awareness. So we're trying to change that, that culture of like, you're going to get in trouble if you make mistakes. So definitely trying to be more open. And, and to your question of like, if I see that, we, we are very, very open to have them the conversations. Mm. this is what happened this is what you should have done this is what you could have done how do you think you you wanted to do this moving forward so start having the conversations and making sure that we don't expect perfection because nobody's perfect so so the important thing is recognizing and 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 try to avoid for for the next time so that we're learning making sure that we're learning and, and we're trying to avoid making the same mistakes but we will continue to make mistakes. It's, it's just how we're gonna then uh, turn those mistakes into learnings and, and avoid making them again. 
Yeah, absolutely. I love that. I love that. That, that if you're going to fail, fail fast. That's uh, it's good. You know, another uh, way I've heard a friend of mine uh, refers to that is complete and continue. So it's like, okay, let's, but the way to complete it, right, is exactly what you're talking about. If it's like the yellow or the red system that you're going to potentially maybe evolve, you know, like, but it's about having the conversation. Let's talk about it. Let's learn. And then so we can complete that instead of feel like, oh, I got to hide it. I don't want to like make a mistake yeah, yeah, let's, it let's it so that we can continue and do a better job tomorrow, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. So we have just a few minutes left, um, which time flies when you're having fun and, and learning great things about Freddie Mac and about you. Thank you so much for making the time today. I just uh, I adore chatting with you. Um, can you uh, maybe share to our listeners for folks that are interested in maybe making a home at Freddie Mac, uh, what advice you could give to them uh, if they're applying to Freddie Mac maybe for the first time or thinking about it? So if you're applying for the first time, uh, make sure you, you, do, you do your homework. There are plenty of opportunities all across Freddie Mac, and I'm sure you can find uh, your niche in, in some of the areas. Then the other thing is uh, coming to Freddie Mac, you, you, you have an opportunity to explore the business side, technology, many different areas. So keep applying. So if the first time around they didn't work out, keep applying. We have plenty of positions open. We have um, in, in many different areas mm. and and just don't get discouraged. And another good way, um, you can get in contact with me and I'll, I'll make sure to, to make time and we can have a conversation and we can explore opportunities together. Oh, perfect. Thank you for mentioning that. We have some links that we're going to share in the chat too. What are the, uh, you can shout them out and we'll go ahead and drop them in for you. What are the best ways uh, for folks to stay uh, connected to you? So LinkedIn is the best way. So you definitely, you will not find another Julissa Pinto de Gracia in there. So just look me up and, <laughs> and, and let's, let's have a chat for sure. <laughs> I love that. I love that. I love. And then, then the other, the other links that we're gonna uh, put in there. So, um, is it's a chat room where you can learn more about Freddie Mac and then uh, careers. Fantastic. You'll see all the opportunities that are there. Can you? Um, thank you so much. And and I hope folks do reach out. You know, Julissa is so fun to talk to. So please do reach out to her. Um, to full a well of information and experience. And um, can you maybe on with our last couple of minutes here, um, we're gonna jump into a pre-record just so you know, so it's gonna end right at the hour here. So it is gonna cut us off. Um, so in this last minute here, can you just share a little advice that you would give your past self, you know, that little, that little kid making Legos and then they're 10 and they're thinking about what they're gonna do and men are telling you that you're not smart enough because you're a woman or you're from this country and not that country. Like, what do you tell that little, that little girl? I will tell that little girl to keep dreaming mm. that don't get too frustrated if things don't happen the way you think they should happen, that there's more than one path to, to achieve those dreams, to achieve those goals. and even if you have to um, take a little break or, or divert a little bit, um, as long as you continue to, to follow that dream and, and that idea, just, just to keep going. Beautiful. Well, thank you so much for making the time today. It was such a joy to talk to you. And um, I'm gonna keep on dreaming and thank you for sharing your dream with us, okay? Hunter, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. Have a All good right, afternoon. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your day. You too, bye-bye.